Hey guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. As you most likely have heard, or if you haven't heard, what we're about at the Beacon Fight for Life is reconnecting the Australian multicultural community. Our main goal is to reduce the number of Australians taking their own life in Australia. Currently, suicide is the leading cause of death of all Australians 15 to 44 for men. Uh, Indigenous people are three times likely to take their own life, and, and it's sad to say that 65,000 people a year in Australia attempt suicide. So the Beacon Fight for Life, we want to reduce the number of people taking their own life, and so what we're going to, we're going to play over the coming months is some footage of conversations I've had with individuals, groups, multicultural, you name it, I'll interview them, so that we can start to make inroads for people um, to stop them from taking their own life give them information and places to reach out to. So, stay tuned. Today I'm fortunate enough to be here with Augusto Zimmerman, who was a former Law Reform Commission of WA, and he was appointed by Christian Porter when he was the State Attorney General. Uh, Augusto, you've got a list of things here that you've done and, and um, a credit to this this uh, state and country. Thank you very much. Thank you. But what qualifies you to have this conversation with me today on suicide around the family court? Well, I have uh, had the opportunity to do a comprehensive uh, research on the subject, especially when I served as a lawyer from commissioner, as you have mentioned. I also have attended many conferences of the International Academy for Jurisprudence of the Family, where I happen to be an elected fellow. Mm -hmm. Another thing I must tell you is that as a result of my work as a commissioner, I decided to do also my academic work on the matter. And I wrote many, many articles uh, uh, testifying to the fact that there is undoubtedly a link between child support scheme, parental alienation, and the uh, incredible number of suicide suicides by male men in mm -hmm. particular in this country. And that's what exactly what I want to talk to you about today. It's been said in Parliament by a politician that 21 men a week take their own life with, to, uh, due to suicide, or take their own life with suicide, but uh, gee, could we substantiate that number because it's said that it's just a number that was made up by a politician. Well, how can we substantiate that number? Well, I have uh, my own evidence of this because as a commissioner, I received many mails of desperate men mm -hmm. who actually in the letter were contemplating suicide. Mm -hmm. Once I got a phone call from one of these people, the person was living in Canada, telling me that he decided to leave the country, but because of the trauma and because of the debt that he had incurred as a result of this uh, domestic violence and family industry, family law industry, that he had no other option in life but to uh, take his life. Mm -hmm. So as a matter of fact, I have uh, been able to testify to the fact that uh, there is this link and in a terrible circumstance of actually having to see if I could actually prevent some of these people mm -hmm. uh, from committing suicide. But one thing I have to tell you is that um, these matters have been told to the Attorney General and reported accordingly, especially when I was serving as a commissioner. Okay. As you know, I've got a, a charity, or Troy, Troy Coward and I have got a, a charity that is Beacon Fight for Life. Now, our mission is to reduce the amount of Australians taking their own life by suicide. And if it's 21, if there's 21 men, men a week said to be taking their own life due to the family court, that's a significant amount of a significant number, and I think valid um, to to delve into and have a look at why. So we've got things like child support department, department of child protection. How do they how do they assist the process of these men taking their own life? Yes. Well, Professor Patrick Paxson is the leading authority on the subject, and he happens to be a dean of law at the University of Queensland. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a very important article and that eventually became a book on this subject. Mm -hmm. And what he says is that there is a clear link here, not between suicide, but this is a conclusion taken by others but that this is the case that welfare payments in order for the state to stop having its burden 
of providing financial support to broken families. Mm -hmm. The child support scheme was made to extort money from one of the parents so that uh, the person who happens to be the alienator can extort financial advantage, obtain financial advantage as a result of this terrible act of alienation. So uh, the child support scheme incentivizes this sort of erratic behavior. And there is undoubtedly, in my opinion, and it's actually opinion based on academic research, mm -hmm. that there is a link between child support payments and parental alienation, also due to the fact that the child support agencies, they do not necessarily apply or comply by the same with court orders. And, and then as a result, uh, the person who is alienated, even if he has at his disposal a court order which grants him the right to have custody over the child, the court order tends to be completely disregarded, which tells me that we are failing here in upholding the rule of law. Mm -hmm. But of course, child support and the magistrate or the family court, they, they speak to each other, right? Well, I, I wouldn't be so optimistic about that. As a matter of fact, prior to the child support scheme, these decisions were made by the court, and the court would decide on custody issues, mm -hmm. and, and then the child support would never be involved. There was no such a scheme in the past. Mm -hmm. Because I have heard of people coming to me to say that when they are approached by the child support agency, and they are informed that they have to increase their payments. But this person says that he hasn't done anything wrong. He loves his child, mm. and he would love to develop a more meaningful relationship with the child. The child support agency completely ignores the request and forces the person to uh, not only be alienated, but also to pay more and financially reward the alienator as a result of the lack of compliance with court orders mm -hmm. on the part of the child support agency. So that's when Department of Child Protection come into it as well? If, yes. If there's allegations made about the non-custodial parent? The Department for Child Protection is doing things that are quite um, reprehensible. And in many ways, I believe they have in many ways a bias. I can give an example of something that's really despicable and tells me that parental rights are not, not taken into account. We have children who are now confused about their gender identity and they are kidnapped from their parents by the child support, uh, Department for Child Support. Yes, they yes. are mutilated, uh, some are castrated, and later on in life they realize that they have committed a terrible mistake, but they are separated from their parents by the Ch Department for Child Protection. So what I have to say about the mm -hmm. Department for Child Protection is that you might not necessarily expect that the Department is really protecting children, mm -hmm. when as a matter of fact, they start to suspect that on many instances and on many occasions, the Department for Child Protection is in the business of committing, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a violation of the rights of the children. So there's an actual case that that's happened? Yes, there is a couple who, um, who lost a uh, child because the child was only about uh, 12 years of age mm -hmm. and was convinced that she had to have a penis artificial inserted in her body and her breasts cut off. And that's exactly what was done. And the Department of Child Protection uh, basically accused the, the couple of being homophobic if they do not uh, didn't support what the child was doing, even though I suspect that the child will one day regret, but it will be too late. Mm -hmm. If a person wants to do that at the age of 18 or, or over, uh, we would even accept. Mm. But for a little child to have to be subject to this is utterly unacceptable, especially when the will of the parents um, uh, just placed uh, below the, the almighty state and the will of the Leviathan, basically the Australian government. Wow, that's, a, that's amazing. Um, so then we've got VROs. Is that, would be another uh, form of frustration for the non-custodial parent. Well, you know, you have to be very careful about violence restraining orders because uh, people can make an accusation. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very easy to obtain a violence restraining order. And the grounds for such an order 
um, very, very, uh, they are very um, variable and they are spurious as well. For instance, the grounds have been extended when I was a law reform commissioner uh, against my will because I thought this would be a dangerous maneuver. For instance, if you are married with a person who happens to have um, problems with spending too much money or is prodigal or has problems with alcohol or drug addiction, mm -hmm. she can claim that you are withdrawing the money and go to the police and say that you have committed what is called financial abuse. And financial abuse is a form of domestic violence. So even if you talk to your wife in a way that she might feel uncomfortable, that can be construed as domestic violence. And the problem with this sort of construction is that this person is evicted from his property, is alienated from his children, mm -hmm. might lose his job, and eventually even become homeless when he has not done anything wrong whatsoever. And there are so many people who are actually facing these circumstances. And that's, a, that's, actually, that's actually happening. It's happening, and it can happen both ways. Of, of course, the, the law was uh, designed by radical feminists. That were, they, they were behind it. Mm -hmm. But some women can become the victims as well. I know of a case of this lady who lived in New South Wales, and she was approached by the police, prevented from entering her property, from entering her property uh, because um, the husband had, uh, was having an extramarital affair mm -hmm. and he wanted to dis dispose of her, to dump her. Mm -hmm. So he got a restraining order on the basis that she was being abusive and violence towards him and, and her children, which was not true. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened is that she, she forced the entrance. She got emotionally uh, disturbed by the fact that she couldn't go back to her own residence and couldn't even see her kids again. And the police interpreted that as an evidence that she was emotionally disturbed and she just tried to go back to her home. She lost her job and, and it, for a while she became homeless. And then, you know, a person who had beautiful life, good property, that had actually had been bought by her before she got married, she basically lost everything as a result. Wow. Single parenting. What, what have you got to say around single parenting and, and contributing to men taking their own life? Well, look, it's obvious that um, a child, the best environment place for a child is to have a meaningful relationship with both parents. Mm -hmm. That would be the ideal. And you know that the prisons in this country are populated most by um, m men who have not had the opportunity to have a proper role model, mm -hmm. male role model. Mm -hmm. And because they have been prevented from having uh, this relationship with the father, they don't have the father modeled figure. And that is also something that can make his life difficult in terms even of when he gets married because he doesn't know how a normal family operates. Mm. He has never seen the interaction between his mom and his dad. Mm. And, and of course, this can actually cause uh, difficulties for this person to uh, properly interact with the opposite gender. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, fatherlessness causes many issues, uh, educational issues, for instance, most of the children struggling in schools, they come from fatherless families. Yep. Most of them consuming drugs the same. Dysfunctional families are a good indica indi indi indicator of dysfunctionality of the child. Mm -hmm. And of course, also um, resulting in a very, very terrible adult life yeah. as a consequence. Now, this is all targeted around, or the family court process is around the non-custodial parent, but is, this, is there statistics around the amount of men killing children and women killing children? Yes, that because normally the custody under normal circumstances end up, even though the law is very clear that it should be 50-50, mm -hmm. but somehow we know, to be a matter of fact, mm -hmm. that um, women tend to have more of the custody of the child than, than, than the fathers. Mm -hmm. When it happens, you can have this um, uh, mother actually developing a relationship with another man so when you have this so-called abuse of fathers, they are not the actual, actual fathers. The, mm -hmm. the best way to protect the child is to keep the father in the family units to protect the, the biological child. One of the leading causes of child abuse is the absence of the biological father. 
And most of the so-called crimes committed by fathers, they are actually the boyfriends of the mother, and, or, and they can be called stepfathers. Yeah. Unfortunately, the stati statistics sometimes blend these two categories of people so that it leads to, it gives the false impression that it is the biological father who is abusing of the child when it's actually the stepfather because the father has been alienated from the child as a result of the, uh, no fault divorce. Yeah. Um, okay, so forget about the parents for a minute. What effects do you think it has on the children's well-being while the two parents go to war? But it's a very bad um, outcome for the child. And another thing, if you face the circumstances I have referred to, mm -hmm. and the child will certainly be um, raised by the parent who would, who would be the last suitable to provide moral guidance and the right standards of behavior. Mm -hmm. Think about that, if you can win and have full custody on the basis of destroying the life of another person who happens to be the father or the mother of your child. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the sort of moral standards this person has to pass on to her ch child? So the problem is that the child will end up being raised by a very immoral person and the person who is capable of using the system to obtain undue financial advantage, even at the cost of the lives of innocent people, including the, her own uh, or his own biological child. So mm. we have a very terrible situation here that the child will certainly not be able to um, have the right moral compass and the standards necessary for developing a proper lifestyle that will be leading to a positive result outcome. So we've gone through quite a few points there relating back to the family court. Is there anything that I've missed? that can uh, create frustration for men taking their own life in this process? Yes, I think uh, it can be very frustrating when you are the victim of a false accusation of domestic violence because I say, and I repeat it again, that a restraining order is not an evidence that the person has been abusive. But to have this sort of label and to have your life turned upside down according to Professor Pac Patrick pa Paxson, the, the leading authority on the subject, is or constitutes the leading cause of authentic or real domestic violence. Because a person who faces a situation such as this, where he is unable to see his kids, when he has done anything wrong, mm. evicted from his property, and being now labeled as an abuser, you are basically turning these people into, in, these people into parias. And you're actually turning these people into people who will be very um, naturally inclined to be um, uh, emotionally disturbed and certainly aggrieved um, by, by what has happened to him. Mm -hmm. So that can actually trigger all sorts of unintended consequences as a result, including uh, this person uh, end up committing suicide mm -hmm. or perhaps even um, decided to do take justice in, into his own hands, which is actually an act of injustice as a result, mm -hmm. but it would be a sign of mental confusion and desperation. So when you see mentally confused parents around, it's not that they were like that from the beginning. They became like that as a result of what, what the system did to them. Mm -hmm. So it's very evil to say that the person, oh, it's clear that he is not uh, uh, fit to be a father. No, he was, but the system was so wicked that his life was destroyed as a result. And he will never ever recover from that unless, you know, we, he gets proper psychological assistance. So, where's the turning point? What needs to change, in your opinion, within the family court process to help reduce people from taking their own life, in this instance, men? I think it's time for because the common law system originally was very much based on, on judge-based law. But most of these uh, uh, sit, uh, problems that I have described come from what you call acts of parliament, legislation. I think it's very important for us to have an overhaul of the system. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should repeal the Family Law Act and allow 
couples to develop a contractual relationship where they can establish their own terms and conditions uh, to the marriage contract. Mm -hmm. And another thing we have to do as a desperate measure is to abolish this um, child support scheme and the child support agency that provides such an incentive for parental alienation and undue financial advantage mm -hmm. on, the, uh, uh, on the part of those who alienate. So we have to do a revolution, a legal revolution in this country. We have to really uh, overhaul this, the system. The system is inadequate. The system needs to change. Mm -hmm. And the politicians, they know that the system needs to change. So the solution, I tell you, is as much political as it is legal. And we really need to have a declaration of war on the politicians so that they are replaced and they then have to find another job in order to sustain themselves because they are not capable of doing the, the job in a proper manner in accordance with the basic principles of the rule of law and natural justice. As a professor of law, what did, what, what's your take on lawyers that's, you know, that are known to be drawing out these cases for financial gain. What, does that happen? It is absolutely despicable. And uh, Professor Patrick Paxson, again, I referred to him again, mm -hmm. has written an article about um, perceptions of family lawyers uh, uh, of the system. And one thing that's very interesting is that no family lawyer would say that they have instructed their clients to basically plan in advance a strategy that can be totally morally crooked but in order to obtain these undue uh, financial advantages and advantages in relation to custody. Mm -hmm. So what I can tell you is very simple, is that there is a problem with the system where the lawyers are profiting at the expense of people's misery. Mm -hmm. And they are the first to acknowledge the fact, some of them have become millionaires as a result, mm -hmm. and you have some people who have to spend millions and millions of dollars, sometimes more than one million dollars, mm -hmm. to just be able to have their lives normalized and they then face the situation that the child support agency is not even willing to enforce the court order and then the whole problem starts all over again as a result of the lack of compliance with the law which is a precondition for the realization of the rule of law any civilized country respects the rule of law and if australia is not doing so it's become a barbaric primitive country as a result and that's what leads to rebelliousness and to violence is the lack of like the culture of legality that's so important to make the people's the lives of people uh, normal and proper mm -hmm. properly conducted one of our goals at beacon fight for life is to reconnect the australian multicultural communities now if there's someone watching this out there and they'd like to get in touch with you to get some advice how can they get hold of you well look um uh, perhaps just emailing me Mm -hmm. uh, they can find my email address on the website of of, uh, of Sheridan. Yes. And certainly, um, I will do everything I can to continue supporting these people, mm -hmm. because I believe that it's my role to fight for justice. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I think I now live in Australia, the only reason is to be is to be here to be a voice for those who don't have a voice mm -hmm. and they have been oppressed. The system has become oppressive. And I know that some people actually get so traumatized that cannot even open the mailboxes anymore. Because every time the government sends an, a letter, it's normally some bad news. Mm. It's highly traumatizing to have to go through this situation. Too many lives have been destroyed. And they put the blame on the uncompassionate political elite in this country that know about the problem but lacking willingness to solve the problem that is, as I have referred to, cost far too many innocent lives. Yep. Well, thank you today for coming to speak to me today, Augusto. Thank Both you. Troy and I really appreciate it. And um, we hope that we can at least get people to listen to what's happening, under try, and, try and understand it, and now make, make choices or make different choices so that we can for the be benefit of our children to start with, to, if we want to really take things into consideration. But more importantly, I guess, is to stop people from taking their own life when they feel like yeah. they're, they're hopeless. Yeah. And I, so I do appreciate you coming to speak to me today. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you, those who are the victims, to never give up. Now we have a reason to stay alive. 
It is to fight for justice. God has placed you in a time such as this. Do not allow yourself to be defeated by those who want your destruction. Overcome this problem, and now we can have a reason to live for and to fight for. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.